So, we're talking about Late Night with the Devil today. It's a found footage horror satire. Quite a lot of comedy in this as well. It's directed and edited by Australian siblings Cameron and Colin Cairns. The guys are here, although I just have to brief you on this because we've been trying to <laughs> fiddle around with all the settings. I've transferred everything over to a new computer. We've got Chris and we've got Matt here, although they can't see each other. We've only got your word for it, Phil, that we're both here. I could be listening to a recording of Matt because he's locked in your, like, basement or something. <laughs> it's kind of fitting, isn't it, for this film that we're reviewing? It's possessed. You have to press play on the on the recording of Matt every time we expect him to say something, Phil. That's what you have to do. Otherwise, he won't respond. My answer to that will be, sorry, dear. <laughs> Can't quite hear you. <laughs> what was that? DJ hearing. What? What? <laughs> Right, so let's talk about this, because I was very excited about seeing this. I know you guys guys were as well, because we're all horror fans collectively, which is nice here on Boys on Film. Uh, do subscribe, by the way, if you're new here. So let's talk about the story. I mean, it's quite a, a simple story. It's quite nice to wrap up in a synopsis, isn't it? I'm going to say that it looked really authentic, but I don't have a lot of experience of watching... Uh, late night TV in America. So maybe this is actually something that Matt should take. It looked really authentic to a kind of limey. Um, so how did it look to you, Matt? It looked authentic. It looked like a kind of low rent version of The Tonight Show, which is kind of the big historical talk show in America with Johnny Carson, who was hosting that for decades. So it has that kind of 70s color scheme, orange and brown and big heavy curtains in the background and kind of ugly 70s furniture and the production design was fantastic the costuming was super accurate you didn't catch someone looking like from the 21st century just not in costume it was like down to a T, great detailing, I feel like. It felt like it smelt of cigarettes. The studio had that kind of nicotine yeah. stain and you just get the wafts of smoke from the 70s. <laughs> so it's David Dasmalchian. He stars as yes. Jack Delroy, <laughs> who's the host of that fictional 70s variety and late night talk show. I kind of was sucked in straight away because it did feel like you were watching a real talk show. I mean, obviously it was very comical, so it was very sarcastic. And I love that as well. But it did feel like, you know, the unexpected was going to happen i guess that's the whole point of this isn't it yeah and I, I really liked the way the format you know the format was it had this really authenticity about it you know we just talked about that but i like the fact that when it goes off air we get to see the behind the scenes stuff and actually that worked really well because you're getting this kind of narrative and the other narrative going on but you're getting it in real time you're getting it like it's the real tv show you get like the, the episode you know the, the part of the tv show before the break and then the break happens and you're getting to see what's going on behind the scenes which i really liked actually because it just felt like it was real time it felt i mean you know i've got a bit slight problem with kind of mockumentaries but this this isn't a mockumentary because it's actually like watching the tv show in dispersed with some real life which is a whole other thing and actually that was really successful for me so it's pretty much rediscovered master tape isn't it of that episode one episode from the show's sixth season so it was broadcast on halloween 1977 and during that broadcast havoc unfolds i mean that's to put it mildly delroy <laughs> interviews a parapsychologist who's laura gordon and she has a book that's out and it's a young teenager isn't it ingrid torelli who was the sole survivor of that satanic church is mass suicide so you just know that something bad is going to happen it's just when because it does take a while to play out i mean it does take a while for anything grisly to happen and when it does i think it's brilliantly executed matt did you get scared by this because i wasn't necessarily scared but i was unnerved i mean the, i thought the effects were great in this yeah it wasn't scared it, it takes a lot it takes a really scary film to do it for me this yeah. wasn't scary but it like you said it had this great feeling of dread slowly coming closer and closer especially when they brought out the young like i think she's maybe 13 or 14 year old girl and you knew something was wrong with her from the minute she came out but you're just waiting for her to kind of do something horrible and it kind of slowly inches towards that reality which is it does that really really well i think it's so funny as well chris you mentioned the behind the scenes footage which i think worked really well because they were black and white and the rest of it was in color yeah. so i think when it does go behind the scenes it's really interesting because not only do you see what happens when they're not actually obviously on 
the screen i think it's great that it does differentiate from the rest of it because it breaks it up it yeah. makes it more interesting yeah absolutely there's a real binary you know between the kind of happy smiley everybody's on tv thing to what's going on behind the scenes that's an important part of the story as well in the intro there's this little discovery that there's a little seed planted about the presenter's past uh which is what's you know coming home to roost ultimately and you know little things like there's some there's some seeds are planted you know and they the tension builds really well because you're you're watching it because you're watching it in real time. You're, you you know that something bad is going to happen, as you say. You just know it's going to happen, and it's when and what it is. You just don't know. You really don't know what's going to happen. And for me, that just really kept me kind of glued to it. I was just like, you know, what is going to go wrong on this TV set? What is going to happen? And yeah, it's a great payoff. And you got to remember also that late night TV back in the seventies, especially. I mean, a certain certain amount of danger in the eighties live TV shows. I mean, over here in the UK we had the word and obviously OTT is the kind of adult extension of Tiz was it's got that danger about it live TV I mean and the uh, and the downside of that too and you know that live to air atmosphere where people mm -hmm. are on tender hooks like expecting something bad to happen but I don't know what American TV was like in the 70s I guess was it like this Matt I mean you're you're the best person to ask I guess Matt's way too young to answer a question about <laughs> I, think it was <laughs> I think it was like it for TV shows of this kind of caliber or this size, not like a national show like The Tonight Show, or I'm sure maybe you've heard of David Letterman or those yeah. kind of famous mm -hmm. American talk shows from the past. It doesn't have that kind of element of like a uh, budget. It's a little bit more localized, so it feels a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit down on its heel, kind of low budget. So it has that feeling of like, it's all about to like crumble because it seems a little bit low rent. You you only really get that when the ordinary path of things starts to devolve, where you have a you actually have a previous guest before the girl comes on. You have a psychic kind of character being interviewed, and he kind of malfunctions for a lack of a better word, and kind of loses his mind quickly on camera, and then they kind of shuffle him off and. <laughs> you start to see and hear about him and what happens to him. And so that just adds to the dread. And then the girl is brought in and then she doesn't really behave like a normal person. It's brilliant. I mean, those exorcist type possessions, we've seen those. They've been done to death so many times in horror films. But I think what is so great about this and refreshing about this is that it is a satire. So it's kind of poking fun at, I, I guess, not, not just American chat shows, but just chat shows, live chat shows. <laughs> as a whole and also poking fun a little bit of horror but it does come from a good place it seems it seems like these directors i think they really are probably big fans of horror and those those scenes you know i mean like i said the the effects i think are brilliant maybe when you compare to horror films that have tried to do the same sort of thing but in a more serious way so i think that that's why it works is because it is comedy and horror but those two genres yeah. i think it's a great balance much like Shaun of the dead i think you know that's that's another example of comedy and horror done brilliantly i think i, I really enjoy the fact that satire kind of points in all directions you know it, it points at the people who are skeptical about parapsychology it points at the people who are supportive of it you know it's it's kind of like it, no one's safe from the satire in this film so it's it's quite even in that regard and i quite i enjoyed that actually it was quite good because like everybody looks slightly silly and then you know the payoff happens and dot 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 you know but you know it's uh yeah no one is safe from the satire it's great it's a bit black mirror as well in the way that it's a warning about the downfall of success because obviously this is a a production company a, a, a tv show that is wanting viewers and wanting to get something that's being talked about you know and they're wanting that to blow up and it does blow up but for all the wrong reasons something that kind of something that slightly niggled me was this professional healthcare psychiatrist character who brings the young girl on who clearly has had her arm twisted to come on tv in the first place so she's already kind of a little bit kind of defensive she's a bit like mm, you know you talked me into doing this i wasn't 100 percent sure about doing it and then basically as you say because they want ratings the tv presenter and the producer are constantly pushing her for more stuff you know they want to be able to do something on tv live and they want to be able to do this and do that and she's always being pushed and the slightly disappointing thing about her as a professional healthcare provider is that she keeps giving in <laughs> she keeps going oh no i shouldn't do that and then she'll be like oh twist my arm and of course i'll do that 
And you're like, mm, hang on, you know, have some balls about this, you know, push back at one point. I mean, obviously, there'd be no film if she didn't. But yeah, it was a I was little, just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's a little bit of a sort of, you know, you do have to suspend that a little bit watching it because you're kind of like, mm, if you weren't sure in the first place, you should probably have said no the second time he pushed you. But, you know, anyway, anyway, the ending, yes. I didn't have a problem with that so much. Did you have a problem with that, Matt? Pushback on the psychiatrist character? Yeah. No, I mean, I think that was important for the storyline. I mean, like, in a real-world setting, yeah, that's kind of terrible. But in the course of a movie, you kind of need that in order to for events to unfold. Yeah. And kind of make things happen. Like, of course, they have to poke this this woman to be like you know make your make your trained monkey do something because you're kind of <laughs> poking like, the bear to, exactly <laughs> yeah they're trying to get this girl to act out and act no, like I a possessed it. girl and they get their wish do you know what i mean yeah and the ending oh, yeah. I, I see i didn't have a problem with the end i thought it was great the way it wrapped up but it was something where i you know i've read reviews where a lot of people have been very sniffy about that ending because it does go off on another tangent but i loved how nuts it was yeah phil i think we talked about this before filming today that i i loved the ending up to a point and then i didn't really like it after that i can understand why people don't like that ending so are we gonna go for a star rating? i mean i was so close to giving this five stars oh really it was such a fun ride and i loved how all the different elements worked i think it you know the performances were really good i thought I, I liked the story i thought it was a bit batshit crazy as well and i like that as an element of it i thought it was really well done I, I didn't think it was necessarily scary but i thought you know there were bits of it that unnerved me and i don't necessarily think it has to be a scary horror film because i think the comedy really worked in it so yeah it was very close to perfect for me i'd love to see it again do you know what i'd love to see it in a cinema surrounded by people that love this film as well and yes. are kind of going along yeah. and cheering and laughing because i mean i did find it very funny as well so i think it's a crowd pleaser it's a very strong four probably four and a half i would have given it if we were allowed halves i'll give it a i would give it a four as well i think i probably just like a l tiny bit liked it like the ending less than you did so that kind of makes it not a four and a half but definitely a four i thought it was really Super well done. I'm really excited to see what this team... Are they brothers? Is that it? They're brother, yeah. Australian brothers. Cameron mm. and Colin Cairns. I'm excited to see what they do next, because I think with an even bigger budget because of this, the, I'm assuming relative success of this film and good reviews that maybe they will get to produce something even larger and I, i'm kind of excited to see that and to be honest i don't know what the budget is i'm guessing it's fairly low budget it never looks low budget though but what they've done it with doesn't. it That's... makes it good i think it's yeah. very intelligent they do a really good job with probably not a huge budget so that speaks volumes to me at risk of just copying everyone else, I'm going to go 4-2. Um, sorry, I'm going to go 4 as well. It wasn't perfect for me because of the bit after the title card. You know, at the, you know, the bit in between the title card and the last scene just didn't need to be there as far as I'm concerned. You know, without that bit, it would have been a perfect film. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just trying to think what my niggles with it are because maybe I should give it a 5 because I can't see anything. There's nothing that I didn't enjoy about it. And I don't think, I think it's so good. So, I'm gonna, I'm yeah, I'm gonna correct that actually. Five. I'm gonna give it five. Wow. Have you <laughs> ever done that before? Is that the rules? <laughs> Can we do that? I, that. I thought once I you have played to... your score, I thought that was it. I thought that was it. You were committed. I thought you were locked in. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I guess it's your, it's your gig, so you can make the rules up. So yeah, fair enough. Yeah, five. Okay. It's coming out in the cinema, 22nd of March in the UK. I don't know about uh, over in the States. Uh, it's going to be available on Shudder, though, from the 19th of April. Okay. So I think it's eagerly awaited. A lot of people are very excited to see it, Who you know, the people that haven't seen it. So go and see it. Let us know what you think. Thank you, boys, as always. Uh, we will be back to, I'm sure, talk about more horror soon. <laughs>